Welcome everybody to Mazevo Connect. This is our uh, Mazevo Connect for August, last day of August. I can't believe it's already the last day of August here, but uh, we do these every month. If this is your first uh, Mazevo Connect experience, we do these every month and uh, we have, it's a different topic every single month. Um, I'm especially excited about this month's topic on requests and we have uh, a couple of guests from University of Washington here joining us. It's great to have them. I'll introduce them here in a minute. But uh, the way these things usually work is that um, I've got everybody muted right now. Um, and uh, we'll have the presentation as we're going through the presentation. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to put them in the chat and we will watch the chat. We are going to leave a few minutes at the end uh, to open it up for questions. And I will collect those and, and we'll try to get through as many of those as possible. Uh, here today. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much how things are going to work here. Um, just a quick uh, introductions. I've got a couple of Mazevo staff here joining me today. I've got Claire DeGroat. She helps me here on the sales team. And I've got Joe Finley as well. He is one of our consultants. Uh, some of you know Joe because he's helped you uh, get onboarded with Mazevo. So uh, just the three of us here today, we're usually joined by our CEO, Dean Evans, and uh, also an, uh, another one of our consultants, Wendy Newland, but uh, both of them had prior engagements, so they couldn't make it uh, here today. So uh, just a quick Mazevo news for everybody. If you haven't been out to our blog lately, uh, recently, about a week or two ago, I posted an article on um, just helpful tips and uh, things you can do to help get a new Mazevo global admin up to speed. Um, I'm posting that because we've had several customers that have had some staff turnover, their Mazevo admin moves on, they have to hire somebody else, or they they put somebody new in that role. And, you know, it can be daunting, especially if you're coming in, you're new to the role, you've never used Mazevo before, you don't know where to start. I will post a link to that article in the chat. Um, you know, our philosophy here at Mazevo is we just want you to get the most out of the software. And so anything we can do to help your administrators get up to speed quickly and efficiently. Uh, we're all for that. Also, too, a change that we recently implemented is that if you're a Mazevo Global Administrator um, and you need some additional training for anything, I mean, it can be to bring up a new feature in Mazevo, um, or you may, even if you're an existing Mazevo Administrator, and uh, you're new or existing, uh, we will train you. There is no charge for that. Just reach out to us and let us know what you need and, and uh, we'll do what we need to do to, to get you some training there. So um, just wanted to let everybody know that as well. I'm not sure everybody is aware of that. All right, so let's go ahead here. I'm gonna share my screen quickly one more time. And I wanna introduce our special guest today. So I've got two people from the University of Washington who are going to be presenting to us on how they use Mazevo today, uh, specifically to take requests and just kind of give us an insight into their operation and how they do things. I think it's gonna be great. Our uh, two speakers are Jason Hansen, who is the manager of operations for the Hub Games. That's the Husky Union building. Uh, they have an entertainment center that uh, Jason's gonna be telling you about. And then uh, we also, after Jason goes, we're going to have Kyson speak a little bit on um, their union events operation there. She's the supervisor of information services in the Husky Union building. So um, anyways, uh, let's all give a virtual round of applause here to uh, Jason, who's going to kick us off. I'll stop sharing here and uh, turn it over to Jason. So thanks, Jason. Thank you so much, Brian, and thank you to the Mazevo team. It's funny because uh, two months ago, I didn't know any of them, and now I consider them like family. We're actually <laughs> communicating. It's, it really is a, it's a great uh, business partnership that literally feels like a family, so I'm just so excited to be a part of this today, too. So yeah, as Brian mentioned, I run the Entertainment Center. I've actually worked in the, the Husky Union Building, which is our student union, for over 30 years, so I've been on campus for a long time. Um, but for the last 10 years, I've been running a 12th, it's an entertainment center. So I tell people that haven't seen the place, envision two high school gyms. It's, it's that big, two high school gyms connected by a counter where we service the customers. So we had a 12 lane bowling alley. You can kind of see behind me, um, pretty neat. That's during our cosmic bowling. 
We got the Husky Eyes there. Uh, we have a large pool hall and an esports facility. So lots of different entertainment activities our customers can do. We take about 800 reservations a year. So quite a few reservations for processing. 60% of them or so are UW events, meaning departments or students on campus. But 40% of our events are off campus, uh, which when Kaizen talks, might it won't be probably that large, but we do a lot of like small birthday parties, bar mitzvahs. Um, we do weddings sometimes, retirement parties, and then a lot of holiday and like end of the school year parties for eighth graders or 12th graders. So lots of different types of events. So we're using Mozevo right now for event reservations of our space. And the great thing about Mozevo is it also allowed us to bring in the event task management or event planning side of things into Mozevo where before those had to be separate things. So that's been a great improvement for us. So we use Mozevo to process customer requests, to invoice and bill the events, and sometimes to hold space for internal events. Say I'm doing a private hub games event that people are invited to, but I wanna hold the space so no other customers can reserve it. Um, for staffing, it's myself, um, and then primarily three students that process reservations. So I delegate these students to be my reservation managers, in addition to another 15 students who assist with events. And these are part-time students. They're working from 10 to 20 hours a week. So mostly student run with me providing some oversight on things. Uh, so previously, before Mazevo, and it's funny because I was kind of gently moved into Mazevo because I was like, I like my web form process. I like that we have paper <laughs> invoices and we use Excel. We don't need to change. Why would we want to change? I love what we have going here. And I laugh because two months ago, I was so hesitant to change. And now <laughs> everything is already so much better. I can't believe it. Um, but I'm going to share my screen for a bit and kind of show you what we were doing before um, and then kind of more how we've changed to what we're doing now. So we primarily send our customers, and they, like I said, could be doing a reservation for many different reasons, to our Reserve Hub Games page. So before they had to read all this information, what are all your different options and packages? And we had come up with all these different packages that, and we don't even have to use any of this anymore because now they can do it all themselves. Or before we really had to help them through the process and they could see all the different prices and what's included in different things. Um, and then we had some photos to just give them some general ideas of what the place looks like when you're hosting a bigger event, like a bar mitzvah or a retirement party or something. So this is during Cosmic, um, another venture period time, and then some different fun add-ons we have. Um, so I came up with this, a, a fun way to change pool tables to make it more fun for kids that don't really know how to play pool or not old enough. And then we had a whole bunch of information and so you could see they're just being deluged with information, information. And the more and more they're reading, kind of the more confused they get versus less confused. Where really Mazevo, I'll talk about, has improved 90% of that. So this is what I say now. Ready to make a reservation? Head right to Mazevo. It's going to be very easy for you. Um, but here's what they used to have to do. They used to have to fill out a form that while it seems intuitive after you've used it a few times, surprisingly it wasn't very intuitive for them. So they'd say, I'm doing a birthday party, how many people, some food, drinks. And then they would, similar to the way Mazeva works, they would ch choose a date they wanted in time, but they could only pick a certain time. There's no way to say, I wanna break this up into different times for my event. And then when they got to choosing the activities, it was always kind of clunky, didn't look very attractive. and we found it was very confusing for them. So, but it worked to me, it worked great. They fill this out, they submit, it gets sent right to us and everything's great. So now we've switched to Mazevo. Click this on. So we've now we've switched to Mazevo, right? So now before when customers had to fill out the online form, like I said, it limited well, it couldn't limit what day and time they picked. So they could pick Sundays when we weren't open or they could pick two early in the morning when we weren't open. So we were having lots of conflicts or have to tell them, I'm sorry, we can't process this event. So many times they're starting off frustrated because they're already being told we can't do what they want to. Um, that process was so confusing. We actually had to limit the rooms or options they could see um, because it, it was just so confusing. Like, well, let's just get the basic reservation done and then we'll go from there, which we don't have to do anymore. 
So customers would do a reservation, but they didn't know if they actually had the activity reserved. So you're planning a birthday party. I have many daughters. I know I want to know right away if the party is happening or not. And so sometimes they wouldn't hear from us, especially if it was a long weekend for two or three or four days. Where now with Mazevo, they've seen what's available, they're holding it, and they've have the space. Um, very rarely would we say they can't have it when Mazevo has told them they can't. So that's really been great because then customers don't, because before they would make a tentative reservation. Oftentimes they would look at, well, oh, maybe we'll do a roller skating party or something else. And so we would lose them before we even had time to approve them, which now Mazevo's limited that drastically because now they know they're getting what they want. So that's been great. We also printed out, we'd create an Excel file, which took a lot of work, um, put in all the activities on all the pricing in there, which took a lot of work. And then we printed it out. And of course they would change it over and over again. And we'd have to keep updating the Excel file and print it out again and again. So lots of paper, lots of work. Um, all that is gone with Mazebo, so it's great. And then every, well, bigger events had a lot of tasks associated with them. Could be there's an alcohol approval process, or it could be it's such a large bowling event. I need them to um, warn their guests or let their guests know what bowling etiquette looks like. So all this stuff was tasks. I had to come up with a different way to manage all these tasks for the bigger events. Masevo has all that built in. So now I don't have to use an outside, either Google spreadsheet or a Trello online kind of a thing. Now it's just all in Masevo, so that's great. So what I've found is Masevo takes it from confusing to fun for the customer. It's simple, it's fun. They can easily sit what they want to reserve. They can even see pictures of each activity. So now they really know what they're getting. You kind of could guess a console arcade, uh, this Xboxes and Switches that kind of have a clue what you're talking about, but they didn't know. Now they can see everything they're reserving, which makes it simpler, more exciting, and I found that they add more stuff, which is what's great for revenue-wise. There's also notes with each activity. So say you're running the console arcade. What does that mean? What do you get? How big's the room? What's in it? Um, can I have food in the room? So all this stuff is great, and it's all just built right into Mazevo. And one of the best things is it drastically reduces the amount of conflicts because now they can see what's available. It's not going to be conflicting with other customers. It's all in the same place. And so it's really been great because then they know they're going to get what they book. And I love that Mazevo uses component spaces. So it's a larger space. Like for us, they can rent bowling alley one, two, three, or four, or they can rent the whole bowling alley. So once a customer says they want the whole bowling alley, it blocks all 12 of our bowling lanes. So no other customers can take them. So super simple, intuitive to the customer, intuitive for me and my staff. So it's really great. It makes everything, before we had a paper reservation book where we had literally had to write on a piece of paper, the customer Johnson has four lanes reserved. Mr. Hansen has three lanes reserved. Now it's all virtual changes. It can make changes instantly. You don't have to redo the whole paper. It's really been fantastic for us and just an incredible time saver. Also, special dates is a, a function built in to where you can put in a special date for your building or your space. Meaning for us, Kaiser and I put in whenever there's a home football game. Because now imagine you got 72,000 people coming on campus. It's going to be chaos. There's parking is going to be chaos. Any vendors trying to come, it's going to be chaos. Well, now we can warn them in advance where before they would do a reservation then you would warn them. So now everyone's frustrated. Now they can see beforehand when they're making the reservation, do I want to deal with that? Is it going to be okay for me? Do I think my time's going to be far enough away from the football game? So that's another improvement to your customer service experience. It's really been fantastic. Uh, my favorite thing is customers can now request activities at different times because probably six times every Saturday we'll do a birthday party. And the, and the customer or the host will want to bowl for the first hour because they want to keep all the kids together. And then the second hour, they'll do our video game room. And maybe the third hour, they'll do the party room. So before, it was nearly impossible to do in our old system and probably would involve about six emails back and forth. And I would say at least an hour of communication time. Now they can do that themselves in Mazebo. They can just treat it as separate reservations. And once you do one reservation, just instantly go change that booking add more bookings for the second hour, I want this. Repeat the process, do it again for the third hour. Um, so that's been great. They have a great option to plan the event beforehand in the way they want, instead of having to kind of talk back and forth for quite a while. 
The hey, other uh, thing is, hey, Jason, ahead, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, are you uh, actually showing anything on your computer right now? Um, I'm just wondering if, okay, I can see your mouse moving. I just okay, didn't yeah. know if you were showing something there. Uh, some people were thinking the screen might be frozen. So, oh, no, no yeah. Thanks for checking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'll show the event book real quick. And so the other thing is customers would do, so this is our event book. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with this. Let me zip to yesterday because we had a big event yesterday. So customers, uh, this is what it looks like for my students when they're looking at the reservation page. And so you can see we have an entire facility reservation. So someone has rented our entire facility and then bowling alley, the 12 lanes. So this this customer had the entire facility, so it blocked out because it's a component room. So it blocks out pretty much our entire space. So that's great. And so before the process was so cumbersome, if some customer wanted to reserve just two bowling lanes, just a super simple request, we would just do it all over the phone. For now, it's so easy and able they can do it themselves. So that's been great. So I found the whole process to be much easier. And when you, I think most of you guys are using Mazevo already. And when you set up the process, for me, I had to set up things differently since it's an entertainment center than maybe you would for a room reservation. So I love the flexibility with Mazevo that it allows me to have capacities for rooms or not have capacities for rooms. So entire facility reservation, I have that capacity of 350. But bowling lanes, I turned off that capacity, even though a bowling lane maybe would say you could only have six bowlers on that. Um, I had to kind of use it a little differently than you might because um, I wanted customers to be able to see all the options. So like I talked about then, the optional notes that the customers can see, um, and then you could have internal notes to your, your employees as well. So that's all great. So the implementation is going to be different. Um, the other great thing for us is Mazevo automates a lot of the tasks. So when I have a larger event, like we had yesterday, and it has some tasks associated with it, before we had to do that all manually, where now Mazevo automates the tasks. And so you'll have tasks listed under here that just come up automatically. And you can assign them to users. You can check them off when they're done. You can delete them if it doesn't apply to that event. So it's made that whole task process part of the event much easier as well. And the other thing I love about it is all the information for an event is all here together in one space. So whether I'm looking from home right now or whether I'm in the workplace, it's all in the same place. They can look at all the event questions that we might ask an event. Um, they can see all the emails, the history of emails that we've sent to the customer. So it's all in one place and it's virtual. So you can do it from anywhere, which has been my favorite part of it because now I can do a lot of stuff from home that I couldn't before. Um, in implementation, you can easily add all the rooms you have. So if I go to my settings and you look at rooms, you can add all the rooms you have. And then I've even used, because before I couldn't really do that. It was so confusing, the old system. Now I can add all the rooms and it's gonna be simple and intuitive for the customer when they make a reservation, which I'll show you here in just a second. And also I've noticed that I can add all the extra add-ons that we've had as service providers or resources because before we couldn't even talk about the extra add-ons, meaning do you want beverages or popcorn? Do you want uh, some of that fun mini golf that I showed you that's kind of mini golf on top of a pool table? Do you want to add the cosmic lights to the bowling? All those things before were add-ons and it was so confusing, we just couldn't do it. But Zavo makes it all super simple. Um, and so those, now all these add-ons, whether it's the food, the beverages, um, the fun different giant games they can add to it, all those have been, I told Brian, they've all been used so much more in just the first month we used Mazevo. We've made more revenue off those add-ons than we made the entire year last year. So in one month of using Mazevo, we've made more revenue off those add-ons than we did an entire year last year, just because it's so easy and fun to add these things. So it's really been, that's been the most exciting thing for me because now I, I created all these exciting aspects, add-ons, but nobody was doing it because it was just too confusing. And now I'm excited to see people getting excited about these and using them now. So that's been really fun. 
And Kaizen and I also have a lot of different pricing structures. So whether it's a student group or whether it's a general public or which we call off campus or whether it's a department, you can set up all these different pricing structures depending on, so I even do different days of the week have different prices because we do premium prices on weekends. And then all my activities have a different price too. So Mozavo makes it all so easy because I can add all these different rooms, service providers, break it down to the day of the week and who it is doing it. All made super easy by Mozavo to where you don't have to use a calculator, create crazy Excel formulas. It's all just happening perfectly, Brian, <laughs> perfectly mm -hmm. behind the scenes in Mozavo. So that's all been super fun and made it super easy for us. Uh, another thing is you can set up, obviously, users. So users is normally you're talking about your customers, but it could also be your employees. So like I said, I have three student reservation managers. Um, I can create a, a user for them and then limit the access they have so they can't accidentally change prices or accidentally create tasks or delete tasks that we don't want them to do. So that's been great because before, just everybody had the same access and they could do things that were bad on accident even. So now you can really limit that. So it kind of protects all your vital information and more so your vital settings that you don't want to get broken. So that's really been great. Um, sorry, it's taking me so long, Brian, but I'm gonna get to the adding a new event. Okay. So no I've talked so much about customers and their process. So when a customer makes a new request, right? They just click this add new request. I don't know why I'm getting hung up here. No. So when customer makes a new request, right? So we'll just say Jason birthday party. So now when a customer makes a, a request, like you'll see the whole process is super easy for them. And before they could choose like today, they can make a reservation for today and I couldn't stop them. Where Mazevo has a setting in the background where you can say um, they have to do it 24 hours in advance. So, or they can only do it for a year into the future. So all that's been great because now we can kind of protect ourselves from accidentally refuting the customer. So if a space is reserved, it's gonna just show up as unavailable rooms. So evidently tomorrow we got something big going on. So I'm gonna go back here. Actually, you didn't have quite 24 hours of notice. So that's, it's oh, yeah. cool that on those, that was telling you, hey, it, it's you need more notice on there. So yeah. Thank you, Brian. Yep. So there you can see, yeah, that notice was blocking it. And so now the customers can see all the different activities that they want and even see what's unavailable in case maybe they're trying to do the entire facility. It'll say you can't because it's in use at that time. So now they can decide right off the bat what's going to work for them and what's not. And if they don't know what the console arcade is, they can click on it and get a picture that describes like the size of the space um, and, how, and what's included in it. If they don't know what the esports lounge is, they can get a good idea of, okay, wow, there's 39 PCs in there. This is a thousand square foot. This is a big space. I can do a lot of things in there. Whereas before, especially if they've never been in the space, they don't really know what they're getting. So say this customer just wants a couple bowling lanes. Actually, I'm gonna do something bigger tomorrow. I'll do... So say they want the whole pool hall. So that now blacks out all the pool tables. Um, so that's great. They want the whole pool hall for tomorrow. And now, like I was saying, now they can easily see these service providers that they can add on. They can add on Cosmic or Coin-Op or Giant Games. They can add on some beverages. Um, maybe they want to serve alcohol at their event. And now I told Brian, I'm able to add all these different resources in that, that we could never do before. The Cosmic Bowling, the Giant Games, the Pup-Pup Pool, we have a selfie station. And then all these drinks and snacks they can add on there. So it's so easy just to say, hey, great, we want to add on five drinks and we want to add on the giant games. And so all that's extra revenue for us. And Mazeva has a setup where you can easily change all these questions about the event you're asking, which is great because then we have control, whereas before it was very hard for us to add questions or subtract questions. Uh, now you can do questions and they're they're tailored. So if someone answers a question, with a certain response, it'll trigger another question. So you're really able to get some great event details for your event that helps your staff as well kind of plan for the event. 
So that's how a customer process works. And then they just click submit, it gets sent to us and we approve it. Um, so I told Brian, this is great. We like using this internally because sometimes we fill out the reservation process for the customer. Surprisingly, some people are afraid of the internet still. And so we have to fill this out for them or they're having a problem with their computer at home's not working and they really wanna get their event booked right then. So surprisingly, there's quite a few times we fill this out for customers. So I told Brian, I love having this option for us and then we can fill it out and then just approve it. But then there's also the add new event option that then you're doing the exact same thing from behind the scenes. So meaning a staff might do it for maybe an internal block or something like that. So I love that there's two different ways to put a request in that accomplish the same thing, but in different ways and maybe give you different information that's gonna be helpful for your event or your staff um, and kind of give you a little bit more flexibility. Now, when you're entering an add new event from a staff perspective, now you can assign it to Sundays when you're normally closed or in the morning before you're open. You have a lot more control over the event to, to kind of tailor it to what the event wants. Um, which does happen, I found, every once in a while as well. And so all this just then pops up in the event book. My staff loved the event book because before, like I said, this was all a paper event book and they didn't know what was coming at them. And if things changed, we had to erase it and sometimes we'd forget to erase it and change it. Where now it's all just right here in a virtual book. Um, I talked about the special dates. This warns them that it's autumn break and they only have certain hours that were open because we're limited hours here for a couple of weeks. And like I said, I love that I can do this anywhere. Before I had to be in the workplace and I had my Excel file and I pull it out, a piece of paper, and I know what I'm doing for this event. Now I can do it from any computer. I have two different offices. I have a workplace at home. I can do it on the bus ride home. So it's been great. The flexibility it has for all of us has really been fantastic. And the last thing I'll say before we hand it off to Kaizen is, um, I love the messaging events to people. When you've created an event in the system and you've gone through the steps, you've read their questions, you message them back and forth sometimes, um, you have your tasks that are irrelevant. And then when you go to email it to the customer, since I have students processing the reservations for me, I love that Mazevo lets you tailor different messages to the customer so we're all saying the same thing. So for mine, if it's a confirmation, I just have this email just already typed up. Students don't have to do anything. They don't have to know, what do I say again? How do I tape this up? It's just all pre-ready to go. And depending on what it is, is it a reservation that's updated? Is it just a two-lane reservation? Are we sending a reminder the week before their event? Um, are we sending the bowling layout details or entire facility? There's a lot going on for entire facility events. So all this takes any guesswork from the students. Now they just use the auto tab. And the beauty of it is I can do it from anywhere. So I can be sending the same message from home that they're sending from the workplace. So it's been wonderful, Brian. It's made it all so much easier. And I, sorry, I talked so fast, but hopefully that was good. <laughs> that was great. Wow. That was, I, I love seeing your facility. I mean, this is going to date myself, but back when I was in college, you know, the whole esports arena and all that, we didn't have any of that. We, I think we had a couple of bowling lanes at my university. That was about it. So it was cool to see that. Uh, quick question, Jason, are you, have you found that you're actually busier now that you've implemented Mazevo, or is it kind of the overall uh Kind of stayed the same for you it's hard to say right now because it's our slowest time of the year because uh, mm -hmm. school just ended for summer quarter and now we still have four weeks before school starts yeah but but i will say reservations for the future are much more uh mm -hmm. frequent now than they were before like we're mm -hmm. already getting reservations for october november december um so yes in that sense yeah they're already coming in yeah. we're getting a lot of people onboarded because it's still so new for us um yeah. but yeah but it's been it's been great already yeah no, that's great well, thank you, Jason. Yeah, that was wonderful. And uh, yeah, so now I'd like to introduce Kyson. She's going to talk a little bit about how they use Mazevo in the union building for their events. So take it away, Kyson. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kyson Henderson. I am the supervisor of information services at the Husky Union Building at the University of Washington in Seattle. I've been with the hub for pretty close to 10 years now. I'm actually just celebrating my nine year anniversary coming up this September. So I have been in our system and in our spaces for a long time. And we did previously use a couple of different reservation softwares during my time. And so we made the decision to switch to Mazevo earlier this year. And we have 
gotten it transferred over within a couple of months. So we're still in our new phase of getting people into the system, onboarded, training our employees and working with that. But I was one of the people who took the lead on our event setup of basically getting Mazevo configured to do what we needed it to do for all of our different services in the hub. And I'll speak to that in a second, but also for making sure it worked for our specific event reservation process. So let me share my screen here with everybody. All right. So to start with, I'm just going to show you our event book. I would say that the hub, the Husky Union building, manages a fairly typical um, number style of event rooms for our reservations. So we reserve out discrete event spaces. We have just shy of 20. They range in size from 30 person tiny conference rooms up into our combined ballrooms, which are just over 1,400 people if you really pack them all in there in a big giant lecture or theater set. So here you can see on our event book, these are all different requests we have taken from clients. Anything in this middle center here. And these are blocks that we manage as requests, as events to help our staff manage operationally. So we have taken online requests with our previous software, but it was always one of the sticking points in a couple of different ways. Um, first, it was a difficult process to navigate for clients beyond just asking clients to fill out a form can always be kind of tricky, but we also had to manage their user login accounts to this system. And it was a different discrete account that we had to create and manage and add the permissions for, which took additional time to get set up, confused people, because like Jason was saying, we have different user types that definitely slowed the process down. But to speak a little bit to what our reservation process is, because I think this will help understand how we take requests. We have several different statuses that we use to manage them internally. So in our previous system, event statuses, booking statuses were visible to the client. So anytime they submitted a request, they would see it came in as request status. Then they would see we changed it to this space held status. That's this medium purple. It would be quoted it would be confirmed. Um, one of the hesitations we had moving to Mazevo was that there are only five status behaviors that clients can see when they submit a request. So basically all a client sees instead of their exact status is that it's pending, it's booked, it's canceled. And we thought that that might deter some clients. We had a lot of folks who seemed to like to get that detailed information on their event, but honestly that has not been a concern that we've had. So to talk a little more about our statuses, let me open our page here. Uh, these are the ones we use. Um, these are mostly for our event and information services. You saw Jason in the games area mostly just had everything in confirmed. But because we manage requests through a multi-step process, we have to create quotes. There are lots of different policies, procedures through the university and through our facilities that clients have to go through. This is what we do. So we have our initial request status. This is the one that is set to have every request that is submitted comes in as this status. It comes in as this orange request. It shows to the client as pending. Um, you can program different statuses to do different things with your space. So for our instance, just about everything blocks the space out. It takes it off of the availability chart that a client can put something in so we can't have overlapping requests come in. The exceptions to that are, of course, things like canceled statuses where it removes it or conflict statuses. So we don't really use conflict statuses in our operations. We don't do a traditional wait list. We don't do um, that kind of service. So we don't have this live to the client, but it is an option for us to put in notes or tentative things. You know, we get a call from the president of the university's office saying, hey, the president might need some event space next Thursday. We can put it in using this status ourselves. Or if we have a client where what they've booked really isn't available, but we don't want to cancel the reservation on them, we're working with them to reschedule it, we can change it internally to the conflict status. It still shows us pending to the client, but we can work on moving it that way. 
Um, one of the things I am really proud of here is you'll notice these are very vibrant, very colorful, diverse colors. This is actually as close to a true color blind friendly palette as I could come up with. Um, I know for a fact that we at the Hub have a couple of colorblind staff. And because we work with student staff frequently who will be seeing these colors, seeing these statuses, we wanted to make sure that it was as accessible as possible from the beginning. So I was extremely proud of these in just about any colorblind checker you would see. And I confirmed with the individuals who do have colorblindness, these will all show up as distinct colors or tints, and they'll be able to differentiate them at a glance, as well as having the different name labels. So let's take a quick look at what a request from a client looks like when it comes into us. Let me find one here from uh, one of our departmental clients who hopefully won't be too mad if I share their details with you. <laughs> we have it set up in Mazevo that there are certain resources that clients can request from the online system and some that only we can add. So an example is we have power distribution that we can give out in our spaces. We found that if we had everything live, like they could choose power cords, they could choose some distribution, people would pick everything and be like, yes, of course we need power, when that wasn't really what they needed and having a conversation was much more of a, an accurate and effective and time-saving way for us to do that. So you can click into the request, you can see all the things we've added here. We have our service providers. Uh, one thing we do, is to make sure that the deadlines for final setup, which is the last day to make changes without additional fees, and the cancellation deadline appear on the quote document itself. Every time we send it, we actually use deadlines as a service provider. So this is literally just text that will say like, hey, these are your deadlines to change things. These are when you can do it. And we edit those dates custom. But you can see we have normal fees, furnishings, services that we add and that the client can request. So requesting is very, very easy. This is our main hub website. There's literally like two or three clicks. You can go reserve, book a space, and then book now. And it links straight to my Mazevo because one of the things that has been the hugest help in getting Mazevo set up, you can see here, is single sign-on. So we have configured Mazevo to use the University of Washington's what's called UWNet ID. So this is our campus university at edu at dot edu emails for everybody. Um, most, I would say, universities and institutions use some form of single sign-on. I'm not an expert in the technical aspect of it, but we were able to get this set up. So everybody who has an at uw.edu email address that is currently active with the university can immediately log in at mymazevo.com. Uh, because what we did was we set up a user type that is literally just new user. One of the things we had to think through, how do we set this up? How do we make this happen when we were getting going is how do we make sure that only people who have permissions to book certain spaces can book them? How do we make sure that they can only access the spaces and the resources they're allowed to? Because the University of Washington has fairly strict policies, and you saw when Jason showed our pricing structure, we also have a very complicated pricing structure. So basically, registered student organizations, RSOs, student clubs that have registered with our office at the student activities, get discounted rates because that is part of what the UW tuition goes to. Departments get slightly less reduced rates than RSOs, and the general public pays general public rates. So if we just said everybody with a UW ID can have everything all at the same time, that would be a bit of a problem because, you know, how do we know if they're in a club, if that club is registered, if they're a staff or faculty? Some of that can be managed through the single sign on. But one of the things we really did that has made a huge difference there is, excuse me, the screen share is closing it, security policies. So we were actually able to configure everything we needed with three security policies here because each one contains different security groups. So hub internal is just for hub departmental staff and student government representatives. The big thing that this one does differently from any other request template, any other security group, is that it gives them access to the boardroom, the internal conference room, and lets them book it 
basically immediately. Whereas for everyone else, all of our other spaces have a minimum time frame you have to book that because you have to give us options to, you know, get the quote ready, get everything ready to go, make sure we can actually accommodate it. But we were able to use these security groups to manage things like we have certain meeting spaces that can be free for student groups and for departments. And that is managed through the security group. So you can see it lets them book as soon as three days away, as far out as 400 days. Um, our policy is 13 and 14 months. So we did some rounding. Makes the maximum time block the two hours that it is in the policy. So it limits that to per day. And you can see here, this is what we've gotten set up for that versus let's look at our one for our major spaces. So this is our Lyceum, our ballroom, our event spaces that hold hundreds of people and can do technical AV up to like concert performance level. They have to give us a lot more warning and we don't have a, like a maximum amount of time. Theoretically, if somebody wanted to pay to rent it out for several days in a row, they could. So security groups were very helpful for helping control that. But we really didn't want to have to triage every user as it came in immediately to get them set up with a login account because that's what we did with our previous system and it really slowed things down. So previously, every group would have to email us. We'd check, are they you know, authorized to do this? Are they not? What are they authorized for? Manually create it and add it and update it and then let them put in their request. So this would slow down the process of actually getting our requests into our system and the clients actually being able to get their requests in by a minimum of two business days if everything went smoothly. That was always our target, but realistically, it usually ended up being more of like one week per. And it was a lot of just manual labor, email back and forth. So we have configured it so that every single person with those UW emails can go in as a new user. New user is its own organization, its own user type, and it uses the requester permission security policy, which is the most basic one. So this has the most limits on the amount of space, the most limits on the amount of time that they can book, but this is like the default. So if you go to add a new request, so this is equivalent to what a new requester would see when they log in at mymazevo.com for like the very first time and click add an event. We can put in our event name, our event type, and then organization. So everybody is able to see new user put org name and event notes. And that's how we figure out who they're actually with. Um, you can see here, I also have our two test organizations, Bug Club and Insect Club, and then the real hub department. But absolutely everyone can use new user. And we go in very quickly. This looks very similar to what Jason does. Uh, we manage a lot more. We have one combined space, really. That is the ballrooms. We manage a lot more of discrete spaces, but oh, not 5 a.m. Goodness gracious, that would be a very <laughs> early meeting just looked at what time I actually typed in. I'm like, uh-oh. You can see here again, you can't book too far out. So we'll, we'll say September 4th. We might actually be booked. Ah, yes, it's Labor Day. So this is, again, helps immediately block things that are holidays, which is very nice. There we go. I can see the internal rooms because I have that policy. We're just gonna go ahead and go with the boardroom. This is another feature I know clients love. You can see what the actual setups of the room are with an example, just a little like icon picture, which really helps clarify. So those of you who work in events will know that there's a million different ways to refer to every setup type, every furnishing type. So for example, lecture can also be theater. It can also be rows of chairs. It can also be, I don't know what this is called, but I'm picturing it in my head. How do I explain it to you? And this was often a sticking point. So let me go back and see if I can find a day we actually have stuff available. There we are. So 250 is one of our large meeting rooms. It holds just shy of 200 people in its largest configuration. And you can see here what is basically a full suite of custom sets that are available. So you can do, oh, it's a round table with chairs around it. It's an open square. It's a classroom. Uh, we also have the option for custom other, which will let clients describe what they want if they don't know what they're picturing. We use it internally for sets that aren't really one thing or another, or when the clients are doing something 
new and innovative we'll say we had a client the other day who wanted to do a fishtail set where it was literally like staggered tables with chairs and we're like okay that's how they described it we were able to confirm and then each one of these limits the capacity based on the room selected so 250 is very large it can do a lot of space a lot of people in the room but let's say i go back and i select my date again or actually, I need to go back one more step. Let's say I really want to have 50 people. You know, my club is 50 people. This is our first meeting. We're trying to put it in. It'll one, only show me the rooms that have 50 people as a capacity in any set. So you can see a bunch of those small conference rooms dropped off. They hold up to 30. They won't even appear. And then if I click on 337, which is the smallest of what are called our medium meeting room. So it's maximum capacity in a lecture set is 50 people. Oop, I clicked on the picture by mistake. So we're gonna wait a second while it shows us the lovely image of the room. Ah, come on, bud, you can do it. This is another thing I will say I like about Mazebo. Sometimes it will hang, but generally just refreshing the browser makes it work again, even if you have to go back. So we'll try this again. My apologies. I pick I picked September eighth. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. Refresh the the <laughs> yeah. let's see. Let's just go press add new request. Let's just start it over again. It's the, it's I seem the demo I've... thing here. It's sometimes yeah. it's just <laughs> Yeah. So just so everyone is aware, I am a global admin for our account. So I have all of the permissions. So what Mazevo is trying to do here is while I'm logged into my global account, pretend that I am a new user that would only have permissions to the things I have added as myself. So sometimes this is also a very new feature. I know, Brian, you guys just added this very recently, mm -hmm. which is it's very convenient. Honestly, you used to have to log out and then log into the tester account. It's not giving you the calendar there. There, it's yeah, like I, it's. I, <laughs> It thinks you can only pick one day for some reason, mm. and uh, I managed it to still trick let you it. do it. But uh, just hit the repeat right there. See if it lets you do which the repeat? specific dates. Ah, there yeah. we are. Well, Let's see, just just pick one of those. Yeah. And this yeah. happens every are. once in a while, Brian. And it's just it's really rare, but right, it's something we do that accidentally triggers this. Ah. And usually refreshing will fix it. Sometimes you'll have to refresh a couple of times, but yeah. Okay, yeah. here we are back again. So yeah. if I select 337, the only sets that will show are the ones that could do 50 people. Yep. So you'll see that lecture set that is the maximum capacity. We've set other set at 50 as well, because we can never tell what folks are going to describe. We have played with the idea of, do we limit the capacity on that? Because we will get clients who are clever and are like, I want to fit a hundred people and this room only does a hundred in a lecture set. But if I say other, and then I say tables, then maybe I can make it work. And we do have to contact them and say, unfortunately, this is a fire code thing. We can't, here's some other options for you, yeah. but giving them the option, those have been few and far between versus the number of emails we've had to say, just like, what, what are you wanting? What are you imagining? <laughs> yeah. So go next. And then you can see our different service providers. So for instance, equipment options, we'll say that. You can see we can add microphones, we can add TVs, we can add lighting and bulletin boards. So there are built-in rules, I forget what they're called, on each resource and for each type, 
where you can ban them from showing up on certain things or make them only apply to certain rooms. So for instance, it's only our major spaces that can do performance sound. So that is set up to where it is locked to those rooms. They have different sound systems. So the ones for the Lyceum are locked to the Lyceum. The ones for the ballroom are locked to the ballroom and they won't show up at all here when I go to book a meeting room and they won't cross over with the Lyceum ones showing up in the ballroom and that sort of thing. On the rare chances that we need to like let's say the AV broke in the Lyceum and we did have to borrow tech from the ballroom, we can manually override that on our end, but the client won't be able to sneak it in accidentally. So one other thing I wanted to point out, is this going to cancel my whole request? Probably. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is we'll talk about this, managing your events. So you can see here, these are all of the events that I have had put in. Um, a lot of these are tests. All of them are canceled for the most part. Um, but this is how clients see what events they have coming up. They can click into them and they can make changes here. And this sounded very, very scary at first. You'll see some events like the ones that have already happened or the ones we've locked will have this orange lock icon. They won't be able to edit those. But if they are able to edit, they can go in and make changes to time, to resources, to whatever they need to do. And like I said, this sounded very scary, very intimidating showing up. Our previous software had a feature supposedly where clients could do this. It never worked. We had to run a secondary report. We didn't advertise it at all. And so every single time a client needed to make a change, even if it was something as simple as like, oops, I forgot to switch AM and PM and now my dinner banquet is from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. They would have to either cancel that and start the whole process over or send us an email and have us manually move it. But now they can go in and submit that themselves. One of the statuses we use, if you saw on the event book, that green status is what we call additional info needed, check email. So anytime a client makes a change, we have it automatically set to return to this status and it sh is configured so that it shows up on our day at a glance this is our dashboard so these are all of our event statuses that are in pending or other which for us in our process usually means that we have not yet sent the client a quote or they've submitted those changes and it's come back and gotten put back on our dashboard for us to process so you can see here we're waiting for this group to get us some further information Whereas these ones were in the process of creating the quote. It's very easy to manage that as we go. So I think I'll stop there for q and I know I've gone a little bit long because we had that technical hiccup in the middle. But if folks have questions about using Mazevo or setting Mazevo up, I am more than happy to answer them, especially. Uh, the last comment I will make is that it has been so user-friendly. We have seen a huge increase in requests not because necessarily people are booking more events with us, unlike with Jason, but because people get in there, see, it's very simple to book and are like, oh, I'll put in my year's worth of programming while I'm here since we've just gotten out of our meeting and decided the dates and it's very easy to do this. So bam, here's our September, our October, our November, our December. So we're currently processing through a backlog of quite a few new requests as people do that. Wow. Yeah, that was great. Thank you for uh, for showing us that there. There was a question that just came in. Uh, somebody was fascinated by the deadlines that you showed, and I was I picked up on that as well. Um, that's a great communication option that you have there. Uh, they're asking if, uh, would you mind showing us like what the customer sees, like their confirmation and how those deadlines uh, actually appear to them? Absolutely. So let me make sure I get into one of ours that are new in Mazevo. So this one was a converted reservation from our old system. So some of the things didn't go in correctly. So let me get back to, I'll just go back to the event book and see what I can find really quickly. But yes, yeah, so we do two different things with event tasks and event deadlines. So we have the deadline resource that appears on the quote itself to the client. And then we also use event tasks and create a separate worksheet that we show to clients, we send it with their initial quote as an attached Word doc so that they know what they have to do and know what their responsibilities are for. A lot of folks manage because tasks are purely internal. A lot of folks will manage that on their own. 
and be like, oh, we email the client on this day and ask for this. We email the client on that day and ask mm-hmm. for that. We touch base with them on this day. We do a lot of that, but we also have things we expect the client to get to us themselves. So here is one of our quotes. Uh, this has the standard header for a department, and I'll go ahead and add our standard signature footer so that you'll be able to see it. So we have different ones programmed in for departments, student groups, and off-campus clients that have slightly different language and information at the top. But here is what the deadlines appear like on the quote itself. And we've been playing with the formatting a little bit in Mazevo to see, like, do we want an extra line break in there so they stand out more? Do we, like, really call things out with two line breaks? But this is what they look like. So far, we only have, I think, five maximum These two, which go on every reservation, we have a couple that specifically apply to graduations themselves and um, one other that I'm not recalling at this point. But another thing we've started adding is there's a couple notes for like things like graduations, which are a very specialized type of event we do. These are the campus departmental graduations. We will add things in the resources for the furnishings for the AV that is basically just these notes. It shows up as a resource that we put in under the service provider, but what it really is is a text note for the client so they can see it on here and see those notes. But yes, this is what we have for these ones. And because these are not action items for ourselves, this is on the client if they want to cancel or make changes before these dates so there aren't fees. But for the ones we do have, we use tasks, and these are basically the client responsibilities. Things like getting us their signature, getting us a list of any non-hub equipment they're bringing in. Things like the UUF form and the food permit. These are university requirements that go through different departments. We basically have no say in them other than receiving the finished permit and signing off on like, yes, the hub is the venue. But in order to inform clients of these, because in our previous system, these did show up on the quote document itself, we basically made an external Word doc template. This is easy to populate because we've programmed it with quick parts in Microsoft Word that show all of the different tasks. So if I need them to put in a 50% deposit, if I need them to give us building opening or a diagram, the ones that appear on the template by default are the ones that we have programmed in Mazevo to always trigger on this type of reservation. And then we just type in the due date. The ones here are ones we might add depending on the programming. That's and then- How yeah, long have we, you all been using that document there? Is that something relatively new or? It is, it is. Yeah. We figured it out in, I would say early August and got it made. And I think I got it made by like, I don't even know mid-August at the most. It's relatively new. We're still getting it on board, so it's not on all of our events yet, but one of the other things I really like, we save it as a PDF so the clients can always access it. It shows up in the event documents when we put it in there. Obviously, this is what the completed one would look like, and when we go to send that email and we add all of our headers and footers, we go to choose our email message, it appears right in the documents and we can just add it as attachment with a single button. So always intimidating. You hit send, but that just opens the message window. (laughs) You choose your email text and then choose existing file. And I can put the event tasks right in there. And now it'll go to the client automatically. So that's how we sort of figured out a workaround for that particular part of our operation that wasn't in there natively. Right. And it's, so far, it seems to be working well. Yeah, that's great. I, that's the first time I've seen something like that. So that's that's awesome. Well, I know we're about at our time, and I want to thank both of you for uh, helping us do this today. And I thought these presentations were great. It's always great to see real-world use cases of how people are actually using Mazevo. Um, especially from somebody that's just recently switched over as you both have. So um, thank you both for sharing your knowledge with everybody that way. Um, I will go ahead and wrap things up. We'll have another Mazevo Connect next month. I'm going to be sending out a uh, a notice about that. I think it's going to be on user security next time and just going through some of the different options that you have there and uh, how to do that and everything. So stay tuned for more information on that. But uh, yeah, on behalf of everybody that joined today, thank you, Kyson, and thank you, Jason, for 
um, presenting for us. So we'll let everybody go. You're welcome. Thank you for the fantastic product. We love it. All right. <laughs> <Absolutely>. Thank <laughs> Thanks, you, everybody. Jason. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.